Hello, in this video today I'm going to attempt to fix not one, not two, but five record player suitcases. Right, so here they all are in all their glory, and I have bought a right load of eBay junk. I thought I was getting honest Argos type returns, but no, these have all been messed with. For example, stylus missing, mainboard missing, stylus missing, stylus missing, and to sweeten up the deal, they put one working one in. So I got this job lot here from eBay for £35 plus £6.99 postage, so £42 in total. But you can still buy them for £33 for places like Argos. And believe it or not, they sell loads because I'm looking at the reviews and there's over 3,000 reviews. Something like this would have various different brand names put to it. They'd all come out of the same factory, but they would be sold worldwide. So it's a very popular product anyway it's not all bad news because luckily because it is a popular product you can buy the styluses very cheaply so i can buy three of them from china for only five pounds 75 so i think it is worth fixing so to begin with what i'm going to do is because these two seem to be spinning i'm going to take the cartridge off that one there put them in these two and see if they're working if they're working there's no point in taking them apart all right good news here check this out so it spins and stuff i put the cartridge on when I move it over and I go to drop it, it will just uh, push its way away from the record. Oh, okay, it didn't push itself away, but look, it's not going over. So can you see, I can't get the arm to move any bit more over than that. Yet on this one, which appears to be working, I can get the arm to move nearly to the very, very middle. So there's something not right there. Yeah, it would only move that far. Okay, so that's going to be some sort of mechanical issue. So that's good. Right, let's take the stylus off this one and put it on this one and see what it's doing. Then to take it off, you just lift up this little catch at the front here and it comes off and there's just three connections on the back here. When you look at the actual cartridge, it does have four pins, but this bottom pin is a spade, so it just goes across both of them. So that's the spade connector here and it goes across those two pins at the bottom. Right, let's connect it up to this one. Excellent news, this has got a whole lot more interesting. So with this one here, there's no sound coming out of it. So it's spinning and stuff, there's no sound. Brilliant, so it looks like we're gonna, I think this is gonna be an interesting video after all. So I think I'm gonna start off on this one here, see mechanically why it's not going across, and then maybe we can move on to this one and see why it's got no sound. Maybe it's a problem with the audio chip, maybe it's a problem with the speakers, unlikely to have two speakers fail though, but I think it should be interesting. Okay, I had a look on the eBay listing, and like most things in life, I am actually the one to blame. It clearly shows in the pictures, not in the description, but in the pictures, it clearly shows that some of them have the styluses missing. So uh, yeah, what it was is I was a bit gung-ho with the buying of it rather than fully studying the pictures. So uh, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter because we have styluses to test, so we can get repairing, and I can just buy them after the video. Right, this looks like it's made out of MDF, I think. Now, although we all know that these are going to be dirt cheap products, amazingly, on Argos at least, the reviews are four and a half stars out of five, and they have all over, I think it was over three or four thousand reviews on them. So I think a lot of people like them, not because it's going to be high-end audio. We know they're not. I mean, look at the speakers and stuff. But I think it's just a nice, easy thing to store away, and then if you want to listen to some old records, you can pop it on and just have the sound of vinyl. So well, I suppose it's the nostalgia that people like more on something like this. Right now, does this come out? Yes, it does. So this is the one that isn't moving over. Look, it only moves to, oh, hold on, it just clicked. Ah, now it's not moving back, look. It's not moving back now. So there's something wrong on the inside there. So what we got going on? Well, we've got a little board here, another board here, the input board there. So where's the audio chips and stuff? Oh, on the back of this board here. So this is the, uh, let me disconnect the speakers here. So they're the speakers. And can I disconnect all this? There. Oh, it's caught around this. Hold on a minute. Look. The wire's caught around it. 
so it can't move properly because the wire's restricting it. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a nice, honest, easy fix. Right, now, get that wire out of the way. Is it now moving across? Yes, it is. Look at that. It's got the full range of movement. <laughs> right, interesting. Maybe these haven't been actually opened up then. Well, what a nice easy one to start off with. So all I need to do is cable tie this long wire out of the way. I'm gonna pull it so that it's tight where the actual tone arm mechanism is. And then I'll put the loop where the actual audio chip board is. And that way then it can't get caught anywhere. So I just need three or four cable ties just to get it all out of the way. Right, so now that won't be able to work its way over there because you can see it's not gonna, you know, the whole, well, I suppose the whole lot could still go over, could it not? Or is it too tight now? No, it should be too tight now because I've cable tied it to the others. This was the only one with slack and that's the reason it found its way over there. So I think that should have solved that problem. Let's get the stylus back in this one and let's see now if it's playing. How good is Roland Rat? I used to love Roland Rat when I was younger. I was actually part of the Roland Rat fan club. Remember I sent away, I got a pencil case, ruler, rubber, sharpener. I loved Roland the Rat. Kevin the Gerbil, there was another one that I forget the name of. I think it was a hamster, Gerald. I think it was Gerald. Your center pin positive on this one, nine volt, but one of them is five volts. Interesting, that's the one with no power. I wonder was nine volt plugged into it. Right now, let's see. Undo this here, move it across. Yeah, it goes the full way now and it cuts off. If I take that one off, does it still cut off? No, so it's got auto stop here. So the auto stops working. You can see they're still spinning. Do that and it stops. And it's got three different speeds, 33, 45 and 78. So you can see that's going slower. That's the middle speed. That's the top speed. They're for different size records. Right, okay, let's see now. Are you going to play? Oh, no, look. Haha. <laughs> Interestingly, the uh, it's the wires here that are stopping it from going down. Right. So what what happens on a working one? I just want to see where these wires are on a working one. Right, well, it doesn't seem to be all this slack here. It seems to be pushed right in. So, uh, yeah, let's see what's going on. Can you just put them from the back here? I bet you can. You can just put them right the way through. Let's get rid of some of that slack. So here they are, I can just put them through from here. There we go. That's it, so the slack's in the bottom now. Because this is just going down via gravity, any little thing stops it from actually going down onto the record and the wires were just touching the record before the stylus. Now these things are sold worldwide under various different names. So I, I, I've got a feeling worldwide there probably is hundreds of, of thousands of them sold, maybe even into the millions. Interesting. It's also not working, so is that a stylus problem then? Let me get the working stylus, pop it on, and then see what's uh, see what's what. I'll be honest with you, I don't understand the inside of a stylus. I don't know how it works. I know it's going to obviously have a very fine tip, but I don't know why we've got like three contacts here. Right, looking at this one, this is a known good one. The stylus looks quite far down, and there seems to be quite a bit of resistance to it. Well, with this one. It's, uh, there's nothing there. It's the stylus that's broken. In fact, it should have a little rubber thing forcing it down, and it hasn't on this one. Oh, it should have a little rubber thing going onto these two white things. Let me zoom right in. Can you see here that there's a tiny little 
rubber thing going down onto these two white things. So that must transfer the vibrations down and this can't transfer the vibrations because this little this little rubber thing's missing. That must be it. Right, okay, let's pop it on. So that's annoying, so out of the whole lot of them I've only got one stylus which is working. No, I've pulled the wires out again. Anyway, let's just see if it's working. There we go. How good is Roland? Right, okay. So, it's, uh, it appears to be working. Let's see if the different speeds are working. There we go. And apparently this is for some other records that you can put in the middle and then uh, they sit uh, they sit on here. Right, okay, that's, uh, that's working. So I've got a feeling the other one now is also going to be working. So let's just take the stylus off this, pop it on the other one, and I think that's also going to be working. Yeah, I bet this one now is because the stylus itself was faulty. Oh, what a lovely surprise. That's right, this video is sponsored by PCBWay and there may be an opportunity that I might be going to the factory in China sometime later this year. So if there's anything in particular you wanna look at, let me know in the comments section and then I can focus the filming on that because I'm thinking about doing a few little videos when I'm over there on the different processes because some of the tech looks absolutely amazing. One in particular is this thing that tests for continuity and you should see how quick it works. So uh, yeah, I think it should be interesting. Anyway, more about PCB way. PCB Way have over a decade experience in the PCB industry. They have state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities and they use the latest technology to produce high-quality PCBs that meet your specification. At PCB Way, they have a range of services including PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, flexible PCBs, high-density PCBs, CNC machining and 3D printing. And if you're heading over to PCBWay.com and go to Shared Projects, you will find a section where it says Projects of the Week. You can find some interesting stuff on there and also there's PCB Way videos where you can learn more about their services and activities. So a massive thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring the My Mate Vince channel. Links as always are in the description down below. Now let's get back to this record player and we'll see whether this other stylus makes this one work or not. Right, let's see if auto stop works. Yes it does. Yep. And now, let's see if it works now. Yeah. Just gonna check the headphones. Yeah, they're working. I tell you what, it sounds a lot better through the headphones than it does the speakers, which I suppose is understandable because maybe these little headphones here are better quality than the speakers that are in here. I just want to have a quick look on the inside to see if we have that same problem with the wires. Yeah, I mean it's a long, it's a long wire again, but what they've done is they've wrapped it round this one, so I suppose it can't, uh, it can't pull over. But again, I'm just going to get a cable tie and I'm just gonna cable tie them up there. Right, so that's cable tied up now and the two screws put back in. I do need to get two more screws from that. Maybe I'll be able to use them from the black one with the missing board because I presume that's gonna be unfixable because the board's missing. So let's go into the black one. I just wanna see what is going on on the inside. Has the board just fallen down or is there no board at all? Right, so this was also held in just by two screws. Let's see what's going on on the inside. Right, okay, so the board's completely missing. We have got the knob here, though. It's a nice case on this one, though, and there is still plenty of spares if you had more of them to fix. But uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's see what's happening with the last one, because that had no power, and also the stylus was missing on that as well. But let's see why it's got no power. Right, so this is like a different 
brand here, and you can see it's slightly different. I'm sure it comes out the same factory, but the edges here are made to look more older. Also, this is only five volts on the input. So this is five volts, one amp, so it's five watts. So in theory, you would be able to bring this on a picnic with you and power it from just a normal power bank, because it's, uh, it's only one amp at five volts. Also, you have phono out, so you can connect up speakers. I was actually pleasantly surprised at how much better it sounded when I had my little uh, headphones in, so maybe via speakers it would sound better as well. All right, okay, so stylus is missing. This one has no power, so let's plug that in here. This says Heritage instead of Bush. But you know they come out of the same factory, don't you? Yes, there's nothing happening here at all, and there's nothing spit, oh God, oh. Ugh. This has got some sort of liquid damage on it. Look how sticky it is in here. This here. Look how slow it is to move down. It's all sticky all around this area. You can actually hear it. Listen, listen to this. Hear that? Yeah, it's all sticky here. Right, okay. Well, you never know, this might be an interesting one. Right, so this has th three screws. So they all seem to have screws missing. And they've made it look old fashioned by covering it in this uh, leatherette type stuff. Right now, this is unplugged. This is all unplugged from here. This has come away from the corner, so is this one here, but they're just post to allow the screw to go in so they can be glued back in. Haven't got any wood glue on me, I don't think, though. Right now, why is this not working? Why is it unplugged? Let's plug it in and see what it's doing. That's very strange. They're very easy to work on, really are. Everything's unplugged from this little board up here. Yeah, here we go, it's spinning already. Does it stop? Yes. Do we have different speeds? Yes. Why on earth were you unplugged? Right. Let's plug this in. See what it's doing. That's horrible. It's going to take ages to go down because of this here. <laughs> but it is going down. It's like soft ejects. The slower the better. Ah. Look at that. There's no difference in audio. There is audio there, but there's no difference. Look. Interesting. Let me see if there's a difference on the headphones. Yeah, this doesn't make a difference. Listen. Right, okay. Let's have a look at that board and see what is going on. Now, I wonder what, how that headphone jack is attached. I'll just push this through. Oh, hold on, LED, LED. Everything's glued in here. Right, so let me get some IPA to get rid of that hot snot glue. The reason I'm using IPA is because it's great at just lifting this uh, this glue. Look at that. You can see, it comes straight off. There we go, we're free. Now, let's see what's happening here. So, it's not... It's turning on, but there's no volume. Why is there no volume? Oh, blown audio chip. There you go, look at that. Ah, oh, that's a shame. A blown audio chip. So I wonder was higher voltage put into this, or audio chips can just blow. Maybe it was played on full volume. Do you know what it might be? Maybe they connected up to speakers or something that were uh, that drew too much maybe 
I don't know, maybe it's just, maybe it's just blue. But anyway, there it is. And I can't make out what it is because the uh, it's been blown up right in the middle. But what I could do is I could take one out of another board. I might be able to buy them for next to nothing. You never know. Just take one out of another board. Oh, a different chip. Yeah, that's a... Uh, different chip there can you see it's smaller they're different boards basically very different that's a shame all right first of all let's count how many legs this got one two three four five six seven eight so it's a 16 pin and can we see anything on here 8018 that might be enough google might be able to find something on that Right, good news, I think I found it. I kept looking for 8018, but then when I looked for my iLoop here, the eight was actually a three, so it was 3018. I think it's this chip here, Mix 3018. And I can buy them from eBay, so I'm just gonna see if there's any UK sellers. Also, let me show you the pinout of it because it seems to marry up to the board here. Right, so if we have a look, basically we have the top of the chip here and that's going to be the dot off the chip here. You can just see the dot. And we've got uh, the top two pins look like they're going to be outputs, don't they? For the speakers, yeah? Left and right, out left, positive, out right, positive. And this top pin goes to that one there and this pin goes to that one there. And when I turn this over, that is the speaker connector. The two middle ones are the ground or the negative, and then the outer ones are the positive for each side, left and right. And you can see there, positive, left, out, positive, right, out. So that's good news. Now let's go to grounds. You can see that the grounds are the, the, the two here. And if I was to go to my meter here on continuity, you know that this here is gonna be a ground, this uh, shield in here. And if I go to the second one along, that one there, you can hear it. There. And also this one here. Now, interestingly, I'm going to zoom in on this chip in a minute. When I go to here, it's completely lifted off the board, but the top of that cap goes to the second pin. And now let's go to power. Power to me looks like it's coming through this massive resistor here. So it goes, you know, through this thing here through the resistor here, and it goes on to that fourth pin here, which is this one here. Yeah, and that does correspond to power here. And power is also on the fourth pin down here. So if I go here, and the fourth pin here will be the bottom of that capacitor, it's all lining up. So that says to me, it's all lining up to what it should be. There's also a ground here on 11, so that's the third pin up. So if I go to ground here and the third pin, you can hear it comes up here. There. So I'm almost certain now it is that chip. Now look how lifted it is. It really has blown very, very nicely. Look at that. It's completely lifted off the board here in the middle. In fact, the board has popcorned underneath it. There's no point in me soldering it back down because you can see the mess of the chip here is completely charred. So let me see if I've got an eBay seller. I'd quite like to buy one of these and then uh, get this one fixed up. Okay, it must be about two weeks nearly since that last part of the video and I thought, Vince, do the right thing. I had two options buy everything cheap from China and wait for it to arrive, or buy from the UK, pay much more, but it will arrive quickly, and also you support UK businesses. So I thought, Vince, buy from the UK. So I bought all these from eBay, three of them, much more expensive than China. I think I paid four or five pound for each of them. I, that might have been excluding postage, I can't remember. And I bought the chip from the only seller in the UK, which was a small little independent shop. Put my details in, didn't accept PayPal, so I had to put my details in. After about four days, I heard nothing, and then I just got a refund. No message to say why I've been refunded, so then I had no choice but to buy from China. And guess what? I bought from China much cheaper, like much, much, like, you know, like a fifth of the price, and these still arrived before the UK seller of these here. Isn't that amazing? So I might as well have got these from China for a fifth of the price as well. I am now going to solder this in, and fingers crossed that record player might start working again, and then I can put all these in the other ones, and fingers crossed they might be working. And another interesting thing is YouTube now, not now, it's been there for a while, have a held comment section. So normally you can see all your comments and then you have ones that are for review and then you've got ones for held. And it actually says, are you sure? You know, like, do you want to read these? In other words, 
they must know that they concern certain words or the way it's written that it's going to be rude. It's a place you don't want to be going <laughs> if you're a YouTuber. But anyway, I went there and I couldn't believe the amount of messages in the hell section about my dress sense on the Amiga watch video. You know, the one that was buried for ages. Could I not have made it any more clear that I was taking a mick when I had socks and flip-flops on? I mean, half the time I was focusing on my feet rather than what my hands were doing. And then even when I started to talk, I panned out from my foot, but yet it was still lost on so many people. And you know, my friend said to me, Vince, don't take things like that for granted. People will really think it's real. And I'm like, no, nobody will think that's real. You should see this comment section. Honestly, it's ridiculous. As if I'm gonna dress like that. Oh my dear, 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 dear. Anyway, let's get the record play over and solder this in. Right, so this is the blown chip here. And these are these ones here. Excellent, right, let's use a little bit of flux and some hot air and let's take this one off. It might be stuck to the board because it's burnt. So I'm not sure how easy it's gonna come off and I don't know whether we're gonna to need to do a little bit of repair on the pads or not. Right, the temperature I'm gonna use is 500 degrees Celsius. Yes, let's see how quick we can popcorn it. And I'm gonna use 120 airflow out of a possible 200. Let's get my little extractor fan on and let's get this chip on. Wow, that came off so easy. So the board has already puffed up here. You can see that wasn't me, it's already puffed up. Let's see if we can clean up that burnt pad and then we can uh, clean it all with isopropyl. Right, okay, so that's the pad, this massive pad going up here. So I will be okay with that, I think. I think I will be able to get it on there. Let's clean up the pads a bit. Right, there goes that capacitor. I need to sort that one out. There we go. Right, let's sort out that little capacitor. Oh, for God's sake, I've taken a resistor off there. It's all going wrong for me. Well, right, <laughs> I'm going to have to use hot air. I don't think I've got the uh, steady hands today. I'm going to lower the airflow right down to 70 out of 200. Right there in place. Oh no, that joins from there to there. I am gonna to have to do a repair. Yeah, this is the main incoming one. And it joins across here to join up this leg and this leg. All right, let's run a tiny little wire. All right, this is some enamel wire. I'm just gonna burn off the coating on it. And while we're burning off the enamel, we'll give a shout out to the second most exclusive group in the world. That's the My Mate Vince Massive. The winner of the most exclusive group, of course, goes to the Bush Record Player Suitcase Appreciation Society. Now, the members this month are kitdigital.com, 
Kip Hakes and Max Rokotansky. Having fun repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, DJVG, Pig Z, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeke's C, Anthony Dean, Baza 2, Ross Mellinson, Ellis Garbert, Gaspar Heller, Richard Berglund, Jacob Culpin, Matt Rawlins, and Soul Reaver. Five, five, five! Thank you so much, guys. Right, so that's nice and clean now, and hopefully all the enamel's off it. Let's add it onto here. Right, so hopefully the chip can still go on there. Right, it's been a bit challenging because to begin with, this is pivoting here, but yes, I could use helping hands on that. But the problem is, there's such a big bump in the middle of the board here, it's like a seesaw going from this side to this side. So what I've done is I've just bent down the legs a little bit on either side, and I'm gonna try to, I'm trying to solder this side up now, but you can see how high it's gone. because I don't wanna bend the chip. I'm not bothered what it looks like as long as we make a connection. So uh, yeah, I've had to kind of bend these down here, you see, because otherwise they're not gonna, you're asking too much of the solder to jump up that much. If I break the legs, it's not the end of the world because I have another four chips to play with. But it's gonna look messy. Right, I want to be careful with this one here now because otherwise I'll melt the other side of it. There we go. Do you know what? I'm really happy with that. Yes, it looks really blobby, but they're all made of contact now. Just gonna add a tiny bit more to this one just to make it as blobby as the rest. Just moving the bridge along so I've got more room to work with it. Right, I'm taking solder of it bit by bit. Let's see if we can do it without using wick. Oh, look at that, that was a good bit there. Right, I might be able to chop that in half here. That was a nice bit. I could use a bit more flux, let's just see. There we go. Right, are they all connected? Yes, I think they are. It sounded like that film there, that uh, series on uh, Now TV. It's all connected, Flight 828. Right, let's uh, wash this down. 
and we'll put it back together. Maybe this chip has also taken out other stuff. Maybe some other stuff took this chip out. So I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Okay, I've got my meter set to continuity. So now, got to go into here, but it's not shortened with that one there, even though it looks like it is. And I think it went up to here and here. Yeah, so that's all good. Right, let's get this back in and see if the record player is now playing. So it's nice and straightforward to get the board back in. We just need to add a little bit of hot glue where the headphone jack was, the LED and also the volume control. The board was kind of glued into place. So I'm just melting a bit of new glue onto that and also use the existing glue, remelting that. As well as that, the corner posts need to be glued in so we can screw down into them because they were broken. And we also need to fit the styluses to all the other ones. So basically that is it. It looks like out of five of them, we have four of them working. The reason I couldn't get the fifth one working is because the board doesn't exist and I can't magic that out of nowhere. But there's still plenty of spares on the black one that can go on to fix other ones in the future. To do with like, you know, the motor, the turntable and also the... Uh, stylus rod stuff like that so there's it's still got value there there's still certain parts on it that could be reused if i come across these in the future so next time you see these now they're all back together and we can do the final test on each of them well i was curious about the how the the needle is on the inside so i took apart the faulty one you remember it was kind of missing the the rubber bridge that goes from here so it couldn't transfer the vibrations down from this needle part because you can see it's got a very fine little tipped I presume like a bit of glass or something here or diamond maybe on good ones and uh, it's uh, it vibrates through here yeah and from here it's picked up on here so this sits on top of this yeah and when you take it apart it should have two bits of metal the blue the one here and also this one here I presume like that there and if you look very closely let's zoom in at these they are, the negative is the bottom one here and these are the positives here. And they're separated by a tiny little bit of insulation in between them. So the needle's causing vibrations on here and here depending on the record. So if the groove on the record has bumps, little mountains on this side, it's gonna hit this one. And if it's on this side, because it's at 45 degrees, it's gonna hit this one, which is now broken. And that corresponds to being picked up. I don't quite understand though. What, I'm not too sure how it actually corresponds. So we have the negative here and the positive here on each side, but how does it pick up the vibrations? What's in here that picks up the vibrations? And then it must come, do you know what? Would there be some sort of weird quartz or something in here? And then when it vibrates, it's uh, doing pulses of electricity through this one here, the positive, and the positive one here. Is that how it works? Right, I'm just jumping in from the edit because I don't think I was too far off there. These are like ceramic cartridges. So I think they're supposed to work like a piezo buzzer. Now, normally you put voltage into a piezo buzzer and it makes like a pretty bad sound that you get in little, uh, old games and stuff from years ago but do you remember the electronic drum kit that i did they had piezo buzzers on and they detect it when you whack the drum so when you whack them they also create an electrical signal so i think what's happening here is the uh the needle that goes in the record groove and it's stereo so basically if you can imagine the groove as a v and you will have lumps on the left hand side of that v and lumps on the right hand side of that v and then basically the needle can move up and down and also left and right so that's how it does the stereo because we have two strips here to pick up vibrations from both sides the left of the v will go to for example the right hand prong here and the right of the v will go to the left hand prong here and then when the vibrations come from the record, because of the grooves in the record, they travel up through these things here and they're creating a little signal, the same as the piezo 
buzzers. So that they're, they're getting loads of little taps, aren't they? And that's creating a signal. And I think that's how it's reading the record. So uh, it's quite good here because not only have we fixed these things, I've done a little bit of learning along the way because I've never thought to look into how these things work before. And considering it's such old technology, it's kind of fascinating, especially the stereo side of it. So I presume years ago, records were just mono and they only had one lot of undulations in them, you know, one lots of uh, ups and downs in them. But now with stereo, they must have got them on the left and the right hand side. So it's uh, quite clever. So uh, yeah, I'm sure back in the day, it must have been a massive big deal when they went from mono to stereo. And then, uh, yeah, just because it's more immersive, isn't it? The VR of its day. Anyway, let's uh, get testing these uh, final finished products. Right, so they're all finished now, and out of five of them, we got four of them working fully. Can't fix the fifth one because the circuit board is missing. So I'm just gonna go through each of them now and show you them quickly playing. So there we have it all working now. So what a nice little mixture of faults. Well, was yeah, there was an extra faults. We had one that didn't uh, go properly because of the wires behind it. We had needles missing and we had a chip that was blown. So yeah, nice little variety there. Now I know what you're all thinking, that they're utter junk. And I'm not gonna disagree with you. But the truth of the matter is that loads of people are buying them. In fact, my wife walked in now, she was like, what are they? They're cute. So obviously there's a certain appeal about them. And if you're into your audio, you're not gonna be buying these. And for the other people, they just think it's a nice cheap way to play their records and they don't have to worry about connecting up speakers and everything because they're here. So whoever designed these is onto a bit of a winner. And it's shown by the amount that's sold worldwide. They've come in all different names. So I would say the factory making these, although they are very cheap products, probably does okay for itself. Are they worth repairing? No, if I'm honest with you, they're not. Now people are gonna say, well, no, actually Vince, you know, they might be, but remember, I haven't got the power supply for each of these. So if I had to buy a power supply for that one, that one, that one, and that one, and then coupled with the fact that I had to buy the chips and the needles, you can see that there's zero money left at the end of it because the price of them new are so little. But is it worth fixing them yourself? I think 100% because they're so easy to take apart, they're really repairable, and you're gonna be able to get the spares for them as well. So I don't really think there's that much to go wrong with them, given the use they're gonna get. Realistically, these are gonna be played by people that found some records in their attic or their parents' attic, and they just want the feeling of playing a record again. I can't see thousands of hours of use going into them. So really, they fit the need of what they've been designed for and the fact that they come in a little suitcase with speakers built in as well is gonna be a winner for most people. So that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching. I